Stim. Now, as I look about the audience, I see an awful lot of self-stimulatory behavior. How many of you bounce your leg while you're sitting in a chair, just like this? Or twirl your hair, bite the end of your pen? Or if you're a guy, play with your beard? Yeah, just like you. <laughs> so why do you do that? Who wants to tell us why they bounce their leg, or pull up their beard, or play with their hair, or do Over here. It helps, it helps you to sit longer. It helps you to sit longer. Right. And I think you almost, you were about to say something? It feels good. It feels good. Now if I tell you to be quiet and stop moving, how many of you can do that? For long. It won't work. So really what you're engaging in is not repetitive non-functional behavior, but really self-regulatory behavior. Some of you are up-regulating so you don't fall asleep. Some of you are down-regulating. Maybe it helps reduce anxiety. The only thing is that most adults have figured out how to do this in a socially acceptable manner. But for people on the autism spectrum, the sensory system tends to be more dysregulated. That results in the efforts, the regulatory efforts, being more pronounced. So that's why we see things such as hand flapping. Let's all try flapping. And the reason why we do it. Now this lady over here is a little bit too good. <laughs> and so are you. Yeah, you're really good. And I was seeing the asymmetrical flap over here a little bit early. So you can actually categorize them. There's the vertical flap, the horizontal flap, the asymmetrical flap. All kinds of different types of flap. See, didn't that wake you up? Didn't that make you feel good? So let us suppose the flapping was... Let us suppose it was intrusive in a particular situation. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's intrusive. And it's disrupting the situation. You tell the child to stop flapping, hands down, quiet hands, what do you get? You probably get something else to replace it. It's more intrusive and more difficult to deal with. So it's much better to redirect. So what I would say to this child, if it was disturbing the situation, so I'd say, here, have a squeeze ball. Why do you squeeze it? Because it's fulfilling a need. And you've got to fulfill the need. And it's always much better to tell somebody what to do as opposed to what not to do. So if I just say, stop flapping, it leaves a hole. And then what are they going to fill it with? So redirecting self-stimulatory behavior, which everybody does, by the way, you know, you'll be much better off than trying to stop it. Mainly because you can't.